sort of take this thing and run with it. Oh, you know, one last thing. I do have to say that this is a pretty unique webinar because we have both Teresa Lovely and Fair. It's quite, you know, Renaissance. Yeah, we kind of like it. Teresa yeah, yeah. Fair and Lovely. We'll go for that. Or Lovely and Fair. We'll take it. Yeah. He hello, everyone. We are glad that you're joining us today. We thank you for being here. There's lots of interest in our topic today on healthy vending. Just want to mention uh, a couple of things coming up because I'm afraid I'll forget at the end. Uh, we, on December 1st, we've got Pam Allwise from CDC that's going to be talking about some CDC tools. And January 19th, we've got Allison uh, uh, Pharisee from Minnesota. So just uh, heads up on that in case we run out of time. Now I'd like to introduce our first two uh, presenters today. Uh, Carol Voss is the Nutrition Coordinator for the Iowans Fit for Life with the Iowa Department of Public Health. She has a master's in education with a major in home economics education. She's a licensed dietitian. She's a nutrition consultant and dietary consultant uh, for, the, for the state level agencies. That's kind of her background. And a couple of really interesting awards, recent awards in 2010. Uh, Carol was outstanding leadership for the National Council of Fruit and Vegetable Coordinators. Congratulations on that, Carol. And in 2011, the Iowa Public Health Association Go the Distance Award that recognizes a public health official who has gone above and beyond the call of duty. So impressed with that, Carol. Then we have also presenting with uh, Carol, uh, Susan Klein. Susan is a nutrition and health specialist with over 30 years experience in nutrition education and evaluation of the nutrition environments. She has worked as a nutrition specialist for the Iowa Extension and as an Extension Home uh, econo Economist. She has a Master's in Adult Education and she's received um, awards also, Excellence in Public Health Nutrition Award in 2009 plus many other such awards in the past few years. And we have a, a third uh, presenter that uh, will introduce we get ready for that session. So Carol and Susan. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, Carol and I participated in this uh, training that was provided by Emory University. We, were, we did this at the invitation of our friends in Wisconsin who were interested in, in learning about NIMS and invited us to come along as well. And we felt very fortunate to do that. Um, we, in conversation, thinking about our state of Iowa, we know that manufacturing, although probably Probably people think agriculture is our number one uh, employer, but actually manufacturing is. But the kind of manufacturing that's done in Iowa is typically done in a, a smaller business, um, maybe 50, 100 people, something like that. So they don't have the uh, option of having a cafeteria or uh, some way for their breaks and for their lunches. And so if they don't bring their lunch with them, then almost always, I think 60% of them talk about how they have vending machines in available, that is the vending machine. And if you've gone to a vending machine lately, you'll know what the choices are in a vending machine, and not necessarily the most nutritious, although we're hoping that we're changing this. So we decided that we would um, seek funds to work on developing a specific tool similar to the NIMS tool for vending machines. Uh, we've based what we have done um, on such things as dietary guidelines, certainly, and, and looking at what are recommended intake for nutrients for people. But we looked very closely at the Institute of Medicine's Nutrition Standards for Schools because in that document they had um, two-tier um, description for school vending machines. And so we started with that as a baseline for at least getting started. We felt like it had to be a real simple code system. So we, we came upon the red, yellow, green. And probably uh, people think of that with stoplight, and often it is um, related to that. You want to give me the next slide? Yeah, there it is. OK. okay. This was uh, stubborn. Didn't do anything different. Hit the button. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Just need to hit the button. <laughs> yeah, hit the button. OK. So Carol and I uh, started this work. At the time, I was employed with Iowa State University Extension, and so I brought along the resources from there as well as uh, from the health department, which Carol 
uh, is an employee. Uh, we sought funds from the Wellmark Foundation and we were able to get funding for two cycles for a total of four years. And this allowed us to have funds to do what we really wanted to do for this and that was consult with the original NIM development staff, Karen Glanz uh, and Margaret Clausen, who are at were at Emory University at the time, have since moved to UPenn uh, in Philadelphia, and so that's where NIMS is now. Um, in doing the process of development, we, we spent time face-to-face uh, -face as well as uh, conference calls, things such as that, uh, but we also determined that we wanted to make sure that our product, our tools, were going to be usable in communities. And that's where we struck up on the idea of pilot testing using local communities to actually use this. So we've gone through quite a bit of testing with the uh, NIMS V process and we feel really good about the reliability and the validity of that. We're not going to share a whole lot about that today because we figure if you are a researcher and you want to know how we went about doing that, we'll be happy to share it with you. Next slide. Next slide. Working on it. Why don't you okay. go ahead and tell us what's on okay. the next um, slide? This slide is going to share with us how we defined the red, yellow, and green criteria or the coding. Um, basically, um, the uh, green food and beverages are considered the healthiest, and they're going to be consistent with uh, the dietary guidelines. And in our system, the green foods provide at least a serving of fruit, vegetables, low-fat dairy, or a whole grain. The only difference between a green food, as we define it, and a yellow food is that the, the uh, criteria are the same, but the yellow do not provide the one serving of those products that I mentioned. And then the red, um, well, it's easy to say they're not green or yellow, and so you kind of get the, the gist of what that is. So easy communication we were working on there. Um, when we look at the criteria, and, and all of this is on our website, I'm, I'm on to the uh, fourth uh, screen if, if you get to that. Um, you'll have to listen carefully on this, but understand that it basically follows the dietary guidelines and, of course, the Institute of Medicine's recommendations for vending machines. So a green or yellow product would have to meet the following criteria. It would have to have fewer than 200 calories per package. Um, many products will have more than one, um, uh, more than 200, well, more than one serving, meaning there are uh, more calories. And basically, when you think about a vending machine and when you get something out of it, you're not going to share it with someone else. You're going to eat the whole thing. So if it has two uh, servings, then we are suggesting that that is not a, a, a good way to go. So less than 200 calories, no more than 35% of total calories from fat, less than 10% of calories from sat fat, uh, no trans fat, less than 35% of calories from total sugars. Whoops, we got too far. We need to go back. Okay. Need to go back two slides. Uh, so I, I'll just finish up with the uh, one thing I want to point out about the less than 35% of calories from um, grams of sugar, that 35% one that is uh, talking about sugar. We're using the nutrition, uh, the, the label for gathering that information. Um, there are other systems out there that uh, interpret that in a different way. and. Uh, if you're interested in that, we'll, we'll share that with you. And then sodium content, less than 400 milligrams uh, in the package, and we're hoping to, grand, to reduce that to 200 uh, as things get uh, more available. Next slide, please. And of course, I told you the yellow and the green um, are very similar, except the green provides a serving where the red doesn't meet either one of those criteria. Now, Carol's going to take over and give us a look at the tools. Okay, the next slide will um, give you a, a, a picture of, of the NIMS-V tools. 
Um, when we uh, were looking at the development process, we went to the other NEMS tools for grocery stores, convenience stores, and restaurants, and we were really trying to make them comparable. So um, they, um, in those tool developments, they had cover pages, they had recording sheets, and so we tried to um, come up with the same type of um, tools to gather information. So we have a vending location cover page that asks questions about the work site itself, um, and, and you would probably need to talk to uh, whoever is in, in charge the, of, of that machine um, to get that information. Um, and then we'd have an individual machine cover page, which would ask about the particular products that are in that machine. You know, where is that located? In, uh, is it clean? Um, and um, the, uh, whether it's a, a refrigerated machine or whether it's a beverage machine and so on. And then you'll note there to um, the left-hand arrow, um, we had intended an individual machine graphic as kind of a pictorial present presentation of the vending machine. And so um, this, you, you shade out the areas that um, are not occupied by product, and then um, number the, the, the items, um, either start sequentially with your own numbering or use the, the numbering, whether it's row A110. Um, and then um, once you have numbered and determined um, the location of those products, then you'll note to the bottom the food and beverage recording page. Uh, it'll ask you, you know, what is that slot, number one, what is that item, the package size, the pricing, what category, and then whether it's a red, yellow, or green um, food or beverage. Um, and then once you have done that um, and determined it, the coloring, you can actually color in the boxes on that vending machine so that you can see just how many red, yellow, and green items are on that uh, particular or in that particular machine. We have also generated um, an electronic version of that where you can type in um, the VIN number. Um, also, whether it's a ye yellow, red, or green product, and you can type in the number of calories and then print it out and post it on the machine. Okay, the next slide, please. And as Susan had mentioned, um, all of the items and the tools um, are on our website. And we had determined that we didn't have the capacity to train people on how to use the tools. Um, we, we did hold some trainings across the state with our Wellmark funding, but we knew that that wasn't something we would be able to continue. So uh, we had decided to um, make sure that everything that people needed was on the website. Um, so this is kind of a step-by-step -step process, an employee, um, a coalition member, whoever is going to go in and do assessments. Um, it tells that process of, of going through beginning to end um, on working with vending machine choices. We have also offered some tips and guidance on, on how to work with a vendor, and we found out that that's very key to the success is um, good relationships with the vendor and being able to um, determine who has that contract and to be able to work with that individual. We have also um, have some success stories are highlighted and we have more successes that we need to post um, on a continual basis. Okay, next slide please. As I mentioned, we wanted to make sure that the training information was available, step-by-step -step process. So we had developed a couple of tutorials um, to take people through the process. So I guess if you are interested in doing this, um, we would recommend that you go uh, to the website and click on the tutorial buttons to the left of the web page. So the two tutorials, one of them is a 15-minute online demonstration on how to complete a NEMS-V um, assessment. So it'll take you through all of the resources that you um, need to take with you to do an assessment, 
each of the tool items and then um, how to enter the information um, once you have completed the um, assessment. We also found that we needed to develop some sort of a calculator to be able to determine whether or not the items in the machine are green, yellow, and red. And as you well know, you cannot find that information just by looking at the front of the product. Um, so we have developed um, a resource guide that lists products that do meet the NEMSB yellow and green criteria, but that is in constant need of um, attention because there are many new products that come out. So if um, when we've done our trainings, if people find that those items that they're looking for in the machines, that they think they might fit the yellow and green criteria, and if they're not on the reference sheet, then we have those people um, either use um, their um, phones um, or to use a computer to be able to, whoa, I just lost the screen here. Okay, sorry. Um, so with a calculator, then you can um, Google the product, uh, do some kind of a web search, find the product information, um, enter, um, as Susan mentioned, the criteria, like how many servings per container, um, the, set, the fat information, the sugar information, and then the calculator will tell you um, from the information you entered whether or not it said green, yellow or red food or beverage. And then as I mentioned, the ready to complete graphic for displaying um, the vending code and the calories for that information. Okay. Okay, next slide. One of the other features that we have found very helpful when we've had, um, given our mini grant opportunities, um, is that um, you can enter the information and actually get a report card for an individual machine or the location as a whole. And it will tell you how many food and beverage items are needed to change in that particular machine um, to convert from red to green or yellow choices. And we have um, come up with a reward or an award mechanism that at least 30% of the food and beverage items, um, if those are yellow or green, that machine would or earn a bronze award. If at least 40% are yellow or green, we consider that a silver award. Um, if 50% are yellow or green and there is no unhealthy advertising in the machine, we would consider that to be a gold award, meaning that more than half of the choices in that machine would meet the NEMSV criteria. So um, also then with that report card, it provides a checklist of action steps. So what should you do with this information now that you have it? Um, to work with uh, individual vendors, um, form a committee, um, so there's actionable items um, for you to take next steps. Okay, I'm going to pass it on to Susan. Okay, so we're on to the next slide where we're going to talk about reliability testing. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I want you to know that we did uh, take the time and effort to test both the website tutorial to see if it was reliable for use of teaching the, the techniques. And then second, we looked at um, the rater, 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 and inner rater reliability of the, uh, the process that we use. And our statistician uh, at the health department worked with us on that. And while, um, as you see there, it, it talks about how both our product and our color agreements were, were reliable, but she did point out, and this is just the way vending machines are, uh, the color was probably not as reliable because there are so many red items in the vending machine, so perhaps it was, was not quite as, as reliable. It was still okay, but um, I, I found that interesting because that's just the way vending machines are. Okay, next slide, please. 
we've been talking about these mini grants, and um, I, we we feel like it was one of the the smartest things we did is to build the mini grants into the um, into the funding for this because money motivates people to do things. What we did was whenever we would do training or we would work with a group, we would then give them the opportunity for small mini grants, maybe five hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars to go back to their location, their their city, their business or whatever, and within six weeks use one of the NIMS uh, uh, items to do uh, an assessment. And it really helps so much. As you can see just some of the mini grants we had one well, actually, four different projects that worked on buildings that housed uh, county employees and and some other non uh, profit organizations as well and that what that particular project did uh, thirteen buildings and forty six vending machines that 's quite an undertaking but actually, actually nothing compared to the two projects that worked on businesses in four counties specifically what we're going after. Um, and they completed 132 assessments in 16 different businesses, and that was quite an undertaking, and they, they learned a, a great deal. Carol and I have also worked with the State Employee uh, Wellness Committee here at the Capitol Complex and used uh, some of our funds to do a pilot project with a, um, a vegetable and fruit uh, cart, and we used uh, originally with that project, did some taste testing of products that would be green or yellow in a vending machine to see which ones could possibly be ex acceptable. That was really important in working with our uh, on capital complex uh, vendors because they really um, wanted to know was this going to work because certainly this was their their livelihood. Now Carol's going to talk about some next steps. With the completion of the first grant, um, we ended up having our assessment tool, and then we completed the trainings, and as Susan mentioned, um, the mini grants so that we could get some outcomes from um, what the tool um, could provide. And also, we learned a lot on um, how to improve the tools, um, the website, so that it was more user friendly. Um, and then we had determined, and we had promised our, our, our vendors, because in working with some of the pilots that we did at the state buildings, they weren't necessarily convinced that just because um, you put healthy products in the machines that people were going to buy them. And so our next phase was that we wanted to, um, and, and we can move on to the next slide, um, we wrote for another grant um, so that, oops, I guess this is an example here, Susan uh, was going to talk about this a little bit, but you can read it there. Um, this is one of the success stories from um, one of the mini grants from Dallas County that they actually passed a resolution uh, that the food and beverages in their Dallas County property machines would offer a minimum of 30% healthier choices as determined by the MSD guidelines. So we, we call this our, our star pupil. So. Okay, now you can go ahead to the next slide. Um, but we had mentioned that um, we wanted to, uh, when we looked at the research, uh, find kind of a unique opportunity. And um, we found that a lot of vending machines were marked with healthy choices, but there, and there might be some signs um, there that told you what the markings meant, but nothing that really tried to target some behavior change with those messaging, and so that was, was our um, next grant, is was to involve the social marketing planning process so that we could actually get some targeted messaging um, that would encourage people to make uh, those healthy choices is in the vending machines. So as a part of that process, we um, phase one was conduct, conduct some interviews at work sites. We did them in both white collar, blue collar, rural, urban, and suburban. Um, also did some online focus groups. Uh, the next phase would have been developing the messages and um, then to actually do some testing. And we are in that phase right now, we are looking at um, some white and blue collar um, work sites where we have the tested messages, we've got the NEMS V dots markings, and um, 
So we have control machines and, and we're going to track uh, sales data um, over uh, about a six to eight week period of time. But this is a couple of statements here from our focus group's uh, findings that basically uh, white collar said they were likely, um, they paid attention um, to nutrition labels. Um, and here's some other ones saying that they were often rationalizing their behavior when they go to the vending machines. Um, and we also did some interviews in rest areas, but this was often true in work sites, saying that people would give themselves permission to ignore everything about nutrition and just pick the junk out of vending machines, uh, that they didn't expect to find nutritious offerings in vending machines, and that sometimes you just needed some chocolate. And so um, we uh, found out that we were on the right track and not converting the entire vending machine over to Healthy Choices because um, we found out that was not going to make some people very happy. Um, quickly, the next slide, um, we're just going to point out the message that was actually selected, yep, um, back one, and the message, um, no, it doesn't like that. <laughs> But it's a picture, there we go, um, it was a, one of the positive messages, um, mix it up, now balancing your snacks has become even easier. Green is great for you, red is not so good, and yellow is somewhat in between, so add a little variety in your snacking routine. So um, out of the respondents, um, 6 out of 10 thought this was the best way to um, get the message across in a positive way, they liked the illustrations, it was a more of a message of encouragement and um, that they were interested in seeing more stocked um, yellow and green items. Okay, um, the, the next slide, um, we, the other component of our next grant was to put a policy in place for state facilities um, to provide a minimum of 30% of food and beverage choices in vending machines. So we are starting to work with our capital complex, um, first of all, on that. And then this next year, we will look at uh, rest areas, state parks, um, and all state-owned buildings uh, to adopt this policy and eventually will serve as a model for other business across the state. Okay, our next slide, um, and we'll go quickly through these because we're looking like we're running short on time here. And that these are talking mainly about the insights that we have had. Um, we have definitely determined that constant communication with vendors is very critical. Uh, and also I'd mentioned that we thought we were on target with the percent of items uh, reasonable for change, um, that you can still maintain profits at 30% as healthy choices. Um, offering incentives, and we're, we're going to try this in the spring, um, offering incentives, putting random dots on the back of the green and healthy choices. We have uh, people, our wellness champions in each business that will have a, a basket of incentives and in conjunction with our Live Healthy Iowa 100 Day Challenge. Um, if they buy a product that has a sticker on it, then they can um, draw from the basket of incentives. We have some refrigerator containers for like onions and green peppers and tomatoes. We've got cutting boards. We've got citrus peelers. We have insulated snack bags. So um, also we have thought important here to get employee, employee buy-in on the healthy choices. Um, and as Susan mentioned, doing the t product tasting and um, we found that um, there's more and more tasty products available just over in the two-year period of time working on the project. And you can access our website um, to find the tools and, and all of the other materials. And with that, we'll pass it on to Teresa. Okay, this is, uh, this is Teresa Lovely, and I'm going to introduce our, our next presenter while we get the slides ready to go. Uh, we have uh, Teresa Fair. Teresa is a registered dietitian working for the Alabama 
Department of Public Health in the Nutrition and Physical Activity Division. Uh, she has a BS degree in dietetics from the University of Alabama. She's currently pursuing a graduate degree in health studies. And Trisha and her colleagues have worked on the Healthy Human Being Machine Project in Alabama for about two years. And she's going to share the details of the process of, of developing this policy with us next. Thank you, Teresa. Hello? Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to share information, like Teresa said, on our process in Alabama of developing our healthy vending machine policy. Um, we received funding from CDC through the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act um, to implement a, um, a project that would increase um, to make an environmental change um, or a policy change. So we decided to um, address vending. And the goal of our project was to increase access to healthy foods and beverages and reduce or eliminate the availability of calorie-dense, nutrient-poor foods in public service venues. So basically, we just wanted to um, increase the access to healthier foods um, in vending machines. When we started this process, we did not want to start um, reinvent the wheel. We wanted to build on things that were currently in place in Alabama. And our school system already had a vending machine policy that was implemented in 2005. So we um, kind of built off of that policy. And also the state wellness discount um, in our state, we have to go through a screening process. And we, if we are found to have certain indices of health risks, then we have to do something to address those risks. So we knew that uh, with that state wellness discount um, in the making in Alabama that we had an opportunity to make, put some things in place and make some changes. So we looked at snack and beverage machines in state-run offices and buildings, and our target audience was state employees with an indirect audience um, being the public that visited those state buildings. So we wanted to implement this policy because we looked at our obesity rates, our overweight and obesity rates in Alabama. And 33% of our active state employees uh, were found to be overweight, and 48% of our active state employees are obese. So we definitely knew that we had a population um, that we could definitely implement some, some changes in and hopefully make uh, up some positive results. Um, this screen just shows um, the obesity rates of our state employees again. Um, and then this slide shows our obesity rates for state employees compared to the general population, and that being the general population of Alabama, and then um, compared to the national obesity level. We also looked at what we were currently serving in our vending machines, the options that were available, and we knew we had some opportunities for some change to be made there as well. And our goal was just to create a policy change. We wanted to do some things to, to change the culture and the way people thought about vending. Um, we, didn't, we didn't exactly get to the bananas or the broccoli in our vending machines, but we definitely had an opportunity to make some changes for the positive. So what we wanted to do was create a vending machine policy that included healthier items in machines in state offices. And I emphasize included because we were not trying to take away all of the options that were available, you know, those things that may not have been quite so healthy, but we definitely wanted to give people who were looking for a healthier choice and option. So in getting started, we had to identify our key partners, and we knew that the Department of Rehabilitation Services was a key partner, their business enterprise program. Um, they work with the vendors, the blind vendors who service our vending machines. So we definitely knew that they were key partners in this process. Um, also the Department of Education. As I mentioned, our school system had implemented a policy in 2005, so we thought that it would be a great fit for the Department of Education to come on board and implement a vending machine policy as well. Um, the governor's office, we definitely wanted the governor to be aware of what we were doing um, and to have this um, on hand, on hand um, knowledge of what we were doing and have access to these items in his area as well. Um, the Department of Agriculture and Industries was a, a department that we had a great relationship with. And in looking for agencies to participate in our pilot project, we knew that they would be a good partner. Um, our agency, the Department of Public Health, of course, participated. Um, our state employees insurance board, 
um, had information that we could access to get information about our overweight and obesity rates in Alabama, so they were definitely key partners. The State Obesity Task Force, um, we knew that members of that task force would be very beneficial in helping us to spread the word about our project um, and hopefully get the project implemented in, in various areas. And then the University of Alabama, we contracted with evaluators from the university to help us to do evaluation of our project. So those are just some of our key partners that we identified in this process. So in getting started, we collaborated with the Department of Rehabilitation Services, um, their business enterprise program. And one of their big concerns, naturally, was the um, vendor's profit. Um, the vendors were hesitant to participate in the project because they uh, were concerned that they would not uh, be able to make money to be able to live. So we definitely, um, in, our, in our grant, we wrote that we would provide funding um, subsidies to the vendors if profits were lost during the, the process of this project. So we emphasize that to the business enterprise program's representatives. Um, and we work with them to negotiate implementation terms of the project um, and of the policy. We talked about the percent of items that would be um, deemed healthier. Uh, the pricing of those items, we definitely uh, did not want the healthier items to be priced higher than the items that were not so healthy. And then we looked at placing of the items in the, in the machine. Um, we wanted them definitely to be placed in an area that would be um, easily visible and eye-catching to the consumer. So we negotiated all of those terms with the business enterprise program. Um, our initial policy that was developed um, mandated that 50% of the items in the machine would be healthier snacks that would meet our specified nutrition criteria. And that criteria is listed here. 10% um, or less of the daily value of total fat, and nuts are an exception to that uh, part of the criteria. 10% or less of the daily value of total carbohydrates and fruits are an exception to that part of the criteria. 5% uh, or more of the daily value of at least one of the following nutrients, fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, or iron, and 360 milligrams or less of sodium. And as I mentioned earlier, this is the policy. This is, these are the guidelines, the criteria that was used in the school system. And we wanted to use those same criteria as well so the students could get those messages in schools. We could be using that message at the work site. And hopefully that same message would spread throughout the community so that the message would be uniform of using this criteria to identify healthier snacks. There was also a beverage component. 50% um, of the items, uh, the preferred beverages would be um, the pure water, non-carbonated flavored or vitamin enhanced water without artificial sweet flavors, 100% um, fruit and vegetable juices without artificial sweeteners, and also diet soda. So we decided to not try and um, work with all of our state agencies. We did a pilot project and identified just certain um, agencies that we would work with. Um, the Department of Rehabilitation Services agreed to participate. Uh, the Capitol Building, um, Agriculture and Industries, and the Department of Public Health. Um, we definitely wanted the Department of Education to participate, like I mentioned earlier, but the vendors were not agreeable to participation. They um, had some concerns about profits that were very strong, and they decided to not participate. So the Department of Education um, was not able to, to be a part of this project. Um, we, impri we invited private entities to participate that um, resided in the buildings that we were working with, but we did not get any responses. So in starting this whole process, we had met with the representatives from the Business Enterprise Program and kind of worked out some of the details. And then we met with the vendors. We met with them individually, those vendors that would be um, servicing our vending machines. And we talked through with them about the project, um, the, the things that we had kind of worked through with the business enterprise program. And they had kind of gotten the vendors' input on some of the things as well. Um, but we met with those vendors individually and talked through the process and kind of got their buy-in about what we were trying to do. and um, their, they, their agreeability to work with us throughout this process. Uh, we also work with the evaluators from University of Alabama to help develop a vending machine assessment. Um, we went and looked at the items that were currently in the vending machine, um, 
and made note of those and certain things related to those items so that we could assess the nutrient content and different things related to the items that were currently in the machine um, so we could see what kind of difference our project would actually make. We did lunch and learn sessions um, in our pilot agencies. We did had taste testing of products so that employees could get an idea of the items that would be available when the policy actually um, implemented. <clears throat> and that went very well. Um, the employees were pleasantly surprised that the items did not taste um, the way that they uh, initially thought that they would. So having that taste testing definitely was a, um, a good thing to do. And we worked with the University of Alabama to develop an employee snacking survey um, that asked certain, they, um, we collected certain information from employees prior to the project's implementation. We sent that survey out in October, and our pilot project um, started in, um, later on that year, 2010 in October. Uh, we had developed graphics for marketing. We had um, looked at the FitPIC uh, marketing materials when we first started the project, um, but when we got samples of those uh, materials, they did not look the way that we wanted them to look in the machines. They weren't as bright and as vibrant as we wanted them to be. So we developed our own logo. And you can see that logo in the um, bottom part of the screen. It's a good choice logo. And that is the sticker that goes on the items that are identified healthier in the machine. Um, we developed table tents that give tips and snacking knowledge that are placed in the break rooms um, in the pilot agencies. We developed flyers. Um, that promoted our lunch and learn programs, and we also developed posters with good choice information on them um, to also go in the break room in those pilot agencies. As I mentioned, the healthy snacks are identified with a good choice sticker, and they are very, there are, are a variety of colors for the stickers. Um, no particular color means any particular thing. We just had different colors uh, developed, and the machines in the break room contain the good choice materials, as I mentioned, the posters, the machine toppers, the flyers, and the table tent. These are just a couple of pictures of what some of our vending machines look like with the stickers on them. Just to give you an idea, um, kind of what they look like um, dressed with the good choice materials. We also developed a website, and the address is listed there. Um, on that website, it has Suggested, market, the suggested marketing materials for work sites to use, so anybody can go in and um, obtain that information. We have the policy listed there. We have guidelines for implementation listed there. Um, also is the list that we gave to the vendors um, to choose from items that met the healthier criteria to stock the vending machine. Um, we also hired a media person to help to maintain our website for sustainability. Uh, we definitely knew that the funding for this project would end, and we wanted to get the website up and running and keep it going because the things will be constantly revised on the website. And so we um, definitely knew that that would be beneficial to do. Um, the bottom line in all of this definitely was the sales, though. Uh, we put all this stuff in place. Um, the vendors still had concerns about um, sales and and how it would definitely how it would impact <clears throat> um, their livelihood. So we definitely were tracking sales data. We've been um, tracking it since the beginning of the pilot program. Uh, we're comparing current sales uh, to sales from a year ago to see what the difference has been um, in those numbers. Um, initially, there were losses. When we initially started the process, uh, there were losses. Uh, we first looked over about a nine-month period of time, and there were losses initially. There were between some places that didn't have any losses, and some places had, had as much as 31 percent loss. Um, and there are various possible, possible causes for that. Um, just the um, fact that there were changes in the vending machine, um, people getting used to the idea of the new items being there. There were some negative attitudes. Not everyone was happy about the changes that were made. Um, the economy definitely um, may have had an effect on the items that were being selected, just bending um, sales in general. 
not necessarily um, just the healthier items. And then we had employee complaints about burnout of items, um, product availability. We definitely had to work with the vendors on encouraging um, swap out of, mater of, of um, snacks in the machine so that they could be rotated um, from items that were on the, the list that was provided. So there were definitely some um, different co possible causes for uh, those losses. And some other challenges were that we had some um, difficulty in getting our, the invoices processed for reimbursing the vendors. So as a result of that, the vendors were not, were not happy. Um, but we were luckily able to work through that process and, and get reimbursement started and, and continuously um, done so that the vendors would be happier. And then we ended up having mixed support from the Department of Rehabilitation Services. When the project started, um, the department was really on board with the project. Um, and then there were some changes in the department, and um, the support kind of changed along with those changes. So those were definitely challenges that we saw through the process. So we kind of took a step back and saw what we could do to make hopefully make a difference in um, the way the sales were going. We did additional in-services with the employees, kind of reminding them that the snacks were there. We did um, taste testing of different items. Um, we did a follow-up employee survey as well. Uh, we met with the accountants at Re Rehabilitation Services to kind of get that process of reimbursement on track. We also followed, had follow-up meetings with the vendors to kind of get their input on how things were going, things that we could do differently um, to help the process work a little bit, a little smoother. Um, one thing that came out of that meeting was a revision of the policy. Um, the vendors felt that 50% of the items meeting the healthier criteria were, was um, quite ambitious, so they um, they requested that we that the percentage be less than some. So we agreed that a minimum of 30% of the items would be healthier items and some would go up to the range is 30 to 100%. So we did have to make a, a slight uh, reduction in, in the percent of items that were meet the criteria. But we've definitely had some successes. The losses were not as bad as we had originally predicted. Um, this whole vending process, this world of vending was very new to us, so we really didn't know what we were getting into and what to expect, but we had predicted that the losses might be a little bit more than what they actually were. So we were definitely um, happy about that. Um, the sales are improving. Um, the, trend, the, trend is the, lessening, uh, the trend is lessening in terms of the losses. Um, we got some unexpected participants and partners that we were not anticipating. Um, some of our hospitals around uh, our surrounding area have been very excited about the project. We've um, connected with vendors um, outside of uh, the vendors that we were working with who are working with some of these hospitals and they are very excited about uh, the project and are actually using the Good Choice logo and, and the materials and using the whole Good Choice healthier vending concept. Um, in their marketing to new clients. So we're very excited about that. Um, and some of our agencies within the Department of Public Health are using um, our policy as a model in their, in their toolkits. So that's definitely exciting to see. Um, our short-term goal is to expand to three additional state agencies this fall, and we're in the process of doing that. Um, our long-term goal is to expand to all state agencies at state and county level offices. And when we originally wrote this, um, started this process, our goal was to request an executive order from the governor um, so that we could spread the policy throughout all the state and local agencies. Um, what we've learned since we started this project, and we have really learned a lot, <laughs> is that um, requesting an executive order from the governor was not uh, particularly the way to go to get this policy passed. Um, so we've definitely had to look at revising our um, ultimate goal, and we are in the process of doing that right now. But we've definitely seen some 
some successes and some positives out of this project um, in working with the vendors that we're working with and learning about the vending world. And um, we're excited about the changes that are coming through this project for Alabama. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I wonder, um, there's a whole bunch of questions, and Teresa, uh, I assume, can you see the questions so you can ask both? Uh, yes, I do. I think we have more questions than we can get in, but we'll, we'll try. That's probably true. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted to know, why was, was it seen as too political to try to get the governor to make a, 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 a resolution? Or what, what happened there? Well, what we found is that um, in order for the process, it has to go through the licensing agency of the vendors. Mm -hmm. And we were not aware of that when we started this project. Um, and that has to do with the randolph Shepard Act and the way that um, vending is handled uh, with the, the, um, the blind vendors. Oh. Um, we were not exactly. We were not aware of what the process entailed in getting that policy passed, um, and we just found that there should have been, you know, in hindsight, we should have taken a different route and involved the vendors more in the process and going through their um, licensing agency. And we were working very closely with the Department of Rehabilitation Services, but somehow that the communication was not where it needed to be um, in the process and. Um, we learned a little bit too late in the process that um, we were not going to be able to get that executive order from the governor. Oh, I see. Well, thanks for that. Teresa, you want to take as many questions as you can? Yeah, we'll, we'll get to as many as, as we can. And, and um, the, the first one is for um, Carol and uh, Susan. And um, so it, maybe not too long on that answer so that we can get to Several, but do you have anyone using green or all green and yellow machines, or was there pushback to keep um, red in, in foods in the machines? Uh, we have no machines that are 100% green and yellow that we know of, and we don't think that's probably a good business uh, model anyway. Um, what we have told the vendors as we've worked with them is that we're trying to help them develop a new audience, not eliminate. Um, people from coming to the vending machine and so that's why we are kind of we work at the 30 percent rate but um, we've talked to people that have done 75 percent 100 percent and actually what happens is they have trouble finding enough product to put in the vending machine at this point okay. As, especially okay. shelf stable items yeah better for the, for the future and then um, also could you um, talk just uh, about the, the produce cart that you mentioned, just a little bit more on that. Oh, the produce cart, yes. Uh, for 10 weeks, I believe it was, 100 days, we had uh, a produce cart where we had fruits and vegetables on, and on the honor system people could purchase um, those uh, for a minimal amount of money. It was, was very, very successful. And the neat thing was we were actually revenue neutral. We didn't lose any money. And you know, with fresh fruits and vegetables, you have a lot of shrinkage. So we worried about that. Um, so we're hopefully working with uh, the vendor that has our uh, lunchroom um, license or, or, I guess, contract uh, to see if we can do something more uh, this year. Okay, and then um, Teresa, this one's for you. Are, are the tools to track the losses in the survey on the ABPH website? Can people get to that? Um, those are not currently in, on the website. Um, if anyone is interested, they can definitely contact me and I would be willing to share those. Um, but they are not currently on the website, but they may very well be in the future. Okay, okay, thank you. So. Um, are you aware, I guess this is to everyone, are you aware of other states who are focusing on these same initiatives? Does anyone know? Well, this is Teresa. I, I definitely know that uh, Mississippi has um, had some great successes with vending. Um, and they are, uh, we've been in contact, Alabama's been in contact with their representatives and, and kind of gotten a lot of feedback from them about what they're doing. So I know that Mississippi has had some great successes. Okay. Yeah, I think I've heard of that too, and um, we'll have to contact them. Um, and this is um, 
we have a, here's the entire question. We have a few red, yellow, green labels and two healthy vending machines on our university campus. However, the cost effectiveness is in the negative because green products expire before use. Any advice? And, and also, a two-part to this question, have you ever used Weight Watchers points on your products in vending? So whoever wants to answer that, I think this was maybe for Carol and Susan. Okay, this is Carol, and no, we have not uh, used a Weight Watchers point. Actually, we have done most of the work that we have done so far has been with the shelf stable, and then with um, we'll be moving into the refrigerator um, refrigerated products, and we'll use the NEMS restaurant criteria for that, um, so that we'll stay consistent with the NEMS products. Um, back to the question about the expiration, and we found that um, as a challenge too um, with the products, and, um, and and we hear that all the time. Um, and I I guess um, it, you've got to find out whether or not the people in your where the vending machine is would purchase them, and then I would say probably market um, those products. Uh, maybe with, with incentives or I know one of the things we were going to try a, a big deal around here is like a blue jeans day so we were thinking about you know maybe um, having some of those products like for drawings um, but I think just trying to get the word out and keying into the customers um, to purchase them and then we found we just couldn't get some of the products um, in smaller quantities and, and so we just didn't use those anymore. Hey, great answers a, yeah. guys on, oh, on everything. Oh. Um, I, I know we're running out of time. We've got lots more questions. Do we have time to get another one or two in, Michaela? Uh, yeah, actually, I was going to, uh, we have Sherry, who um, is a brave soul who has raised her hand. Sherry, I'm going to unmute your microphone. Do you want to ask your question? Sherry, are you there? Okay, maybe not. Darn it. Okay, uh, sure, Teresa, go ahead. Uh, maybe get one more. Well, okay, um, why do you think uh, employees paid attention to the nutrition information in the vending machines when the researchers found that few people pay attention to nutrition information at restaurants? So, anyone have a response for that? Could, could you repeat the first part of the question? Why do you think employees paid attention to the nutrition information in vending when often they don't do the same thing when it comes to restaurants? Why do you think you had the impact hmm. and interest on the vending nutrition information? If you compared it to like restaurants when we know people don't pay as much attention? Hello? Yeah, I'm just trying to think. I'm I'm not <laughs> sure that um, we got a lot of mixed um, responses, um, especially with rest areas and, and a lot of our blue collar sites on whether they really do pay a particular attention um, to the nutrition information. So I guess that's what kind of stumps me. I think you have a, a smaller uh, segment and audience that will be interested in that information. And I guess we found out in a white collar setting there were more, in, there was more interest um, in that nutrition information that there was in a blue collar setting. So maybe the difference in cafeterias in those buildings would vary too. Okay. Well, I know we've got more questions, but I also know we're over on our time, and, um, I, and I see several have asked for the slides, so Michael on that. Yep, yep, Teresa, or not Teresa, Kelly is uh, working on that, and will send the slides along with the, um, a link to the slides along with uh, the evaluation. Um, but I think, yeah, and the, and the rest of the questions we can certainly share with the presenters, and if you guys can uh, follow up with people individually, that would be awesome. Um, but I think we're out of time. This, I think this has been really excellent. Um, and I want to thank everyone for being here. You guys um, did a great job. And I think it was awesome to see how, uh, how Teresa's, um, you know, sort of case study uh, turned out. Um, and I think that's it.
Um, thanks everybody for being here. Thanks to the presenters. Thanks to uh, the lovely Teresa. <laughs> And uh, let's see, tomorrow we have John Weaver, who is always a favorite, talking about sort of um, happiness and, and uh, health and, and those sort of um, positive psychology type things. Unfortunately, I can't tell you what the name of his presentation is, but hope to see you there. Uh, have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.